Good morning. Welcome to your Saturday morning, early morning intuitive guidance. Today we're in the library. It's a little dark in here, but that's okay. Let's see what we can do. We'll lighten things up with our card for today. So I'm Dr. Bonnie Nossbaum, America's kick-ass coach and psychologist. Here with some words of wisdom for us to get rolling today. And it'll be interesting to see how some of you feel like this card applies or doesn't apply. Good morning, Mara. Glad you are here. And good morning to whomever else has popped in. Your name isn't popping up, but I see that there we're up to three now. Rock on. Glad you guys are all here. Good morning, Trudy. Welcome, welcome. So, Wild Offerings Deck by Tosha Silver. This one kind of leaped off the shelf at me. So, I think, I think we have a message. I think we have a message. And some of you may question, well, how does this even fit? But we'll figure it out, right? First, got to show you Ganesh, because I always like pink elephants. What a happy thing, right? And then our card for today is companionship. Companionship. And the artwork on the cards is by Katie Daisy, so I like all the... This one's kind of a, a little more of a twist on Paisley, I think. So, companionship. So let's just settle in for our words today. Some nice deep breaths. Coming into right here, right now. Just setting aside for the moment other things you're going to do, be doing today. Just to be present for these words. Let's see what we get. Companionship. When you fully bless and embrace your aloneness, you're ready for the ones who are meant to be with you. Let me say that again. When you fully embrace, bless and embrace your aloneness, you're ready for the ones who are meant to be with you. May I welcome this solitude, knowing it will open the way for all healthy relationships. So how many people do you know, you may be one of them, who hangs on to relationships simply because you don't like being alone? And there is a huge difference between alone and lonely. You can be in a crowd and be lonely. Alone is, to me, the, the other word on the card that kind of captures that is solitude. Solitude. How do you do with solitude? If I look around at, at my fellow earth walkers, I see a whole lot of folks who are really uncomfortable with solitude, really uncomfortable with the quiet, etc. But again, as we've been saying over and over and over again, and Today and tomorrow and the following day are really um, ripe with possibilities for this because of the eclipse tomorrow. That when we want to change something, when we're willing to change something, when we, so in this case, being willing to step into that quiet, step into that solitude, embrace aloneness. Again, then that can open doors that otherwise might not open in terms of companionship. I have a lot of people who talk about having a lot of friends, but they don't really have anybody that close to them, the people they are real with. I'm reading yet another Glennon Doyle book, and she talks in there about playing by the rules and what are the rules of um like high school friendships and college friendships and there's a whole lot of stuff that's not to be spoken of. You have roles to play and you have rules to follow and here's how we do this thing and it's no wonder we end up with a whole bunch of people who don't know what their feelings are, don't know how to communicate about where they're at, don't know what to do about it when they're in a deep dark spot etc. Good morning, Joyce. Glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. I believe we really must learn how to communicate about all of those things, how to really show what's truly going on inside of us. Instead of answering the question, how are you with, I'm fine, I'm great, and it's not the truth, beginning to tell the truth. And, and I know some of you are going to say, yeah, well, people don't want to hear that. That may be true because they've been trained not to. Doesn't mean we can't all be retrained. To truly listen 
when someone responds to our how are you. Maybe that needs to be reclaimed as a way of truly checking in with someone as opposed to um, an unconscious greeting. What if what, ah, the Rayford says true. Glad you're here, Rayford. Good to see you. What if we truly wanted to hear how people were doing, really doing, okay? So I ask somebody and they maybe say, well, I'm really having a hard time right now because I'm not enjoying my job at all, but I'm too afraid to make a change, blah, blah, blah. And I really get a sense of what's going on with them. Because how many times when you say to someone, how you doing? And they give you an answer, the rote answer, you can tell it's bullshit. You can totally tell it's bullshit. Uh, Holly says, this is timely, of course. Absolutely. The cards come up when they're meant to come up. The messages are meant to connect with us at this point in time when we pay attention. And again, I know there are many people who don't buy into, uh, yeah, pull a card and there's energy to it and it means something right here, right now. Fine. Regardless, the words are still here. Are you willing to step into those words and see how they fit for you right here, right now? So maybe it isn't um, divinely guided. If you don't believe in that, that's absolutely fine. But these are the words that are showing up today and wouldn't it be a good thing to do some discernment for yourself about how do these words truly fit for you? Companionship, when you fully bless and embrace your aloneness, you're ready for the ones who are meant to be with you. I personally probably have far fewer people in my life now than I have in the past. When I was willing to indulge acquaintanceship and, you know, we, we milled about each other, but we weren't really connected. Yeah, there were tons of people in my life. Were there many that I could say, hey, I'm having a crappy day and can you help me dig out or can we go for a walk or, um, no, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to sit and journal today or whatever it is. The people who, as Glennon Doyle would say, know the ugly, ugly truth about you and love you still. And not even just love you in spite of, but maybe love you because of. Yeah, that Glennon Doyle, she was a train wreck for years. But that's what makes her real. That's what makes her real. The drinking, the drugging, the, the, all the things that she went through to try to find herself, the true her. And not willing to shove that back in the box, okay? So, are there people, good morning, Cheryl, welcome. There are, for me in my life, there are those people that when I show up, they turn and run because they don't want to be real. They don't want to have me speak the inconvenient truths. And they may want to do, see if they can yell louder than I can <laughs> about something, but I'm really not willing to go there anymore. If someone isn't of the same mindset as I am, fabulous. And I'd love to hear, how did you come to the mindset you're at? And I think going back to companionship, that is a huge piece of companionship. Hopefully your companions don't agree with you lockstep, 100%, everything you think, say, do. Hopefully they have some of their own thoughts. Can we appreciate? Yep, yes, absolutely. Shoving things down and trying to keep it there is the thief of joy and love and the thief of wellness. We cannot be well when we're stuffing all of this stuff down. And if we're not willing to allow people to be where they're at with something, so if someone, I'm just going to make something up here, but if someone has what I consider to be a heinous opinion, um, like women don't deserve to be paid the same as men or, you know, those kinds of equity things, a whole lot of what's going on in our world right now, um, I have to work to say, okay, tell me why you believe that. Give me your, your feedback on where's that coming from. And I hope 
when you're done telling me why you believe what you believe, that you'd be willing to hear why I believe what I believe. Many times they are not. They want to spout their side of the, the issue and not hear the another side. Good morning, Mary. Welcome. Glad you are here. Um, can we get back to the point where we are much better listeners? Can we get to the point where we can speak our truth kindly and lovingly? Can we let it go if someone is not willing to hear what we have to say? I don't believe it's worth wasting your time and energy trying to jam your opinion down somebody's throat. On the other hand, I think there can be places where to speak our truth quietly and lovingly and then let it go can be helpful. And sometimes those people may come back and say, you know, I was thinking about what you said and tell me more about that. Can we get back to that place? Can we learn skill sets for doing that? And I know schools are overwhelmed with all they have to teach, but wouldn't it be lovely if there was an intentional communication class early in school, early, at least middle school, if not younger, help people know how to speak about things, help people know how to disagree kindly and lovingly. That allows the space then for companionship. If the only ones you're willing to have as companions are cookie cutter copies of yourself, you're not going to grow much. You're not going to grow much at all. If you're willing to entertain people who live a different lifestyle than you do and um, think differently than you do and are willing to have my dog's here, willing to have intense, deep conversations about stuff, then we're going to be getting somewhere. Then we're going to be getting somewhere. So, and those conversations with yourself, how often do we lie to ourselves? I'm doing fine. And you're anything but fine. When we're willing to be discerning with ourselves, that can very much lay the groundwork for us being discerning with others. All right? So today is about companionship, fully blessing and embracing aloneness, and then reaching out to others, having a balance of that solitude and connection. Comments. I'd love to have some comments. Good morning, Linda. I'd love to hear where people are at on this. What scares the bejesus out of you about this? Right? For me, good morning, Diane. Glad you're here. For me, um, sometimes it's the reaching out to someone and saying, hey, you want to go do something? And needing to get to the point where I've adjusted my thought process that if someone says, nope, it doesn't mean they're rejecting me. It just means might not be convenient timing, might not be something they're interested in, might, they might not have the energy that day. Tons of other reasons why someone might say no. Right? I think there's a whole bunch of us. Good morning, Lori. Welcome. Glad you're here. There's a whole bunch of us who get sucked down the drain of, I need to keep people happy. I need to please people. I need to not say the things that are going to irritate others, especially the, hey, we've got a pink elephant in the living room here. Are we going to deal with it or not? Um, and we need to get to the point again where we are kind and loving with ourselves, kind and loving with other people. Everybody's walking this path. And everybody's path is strewn with pitfalls, right? There's also beauty on our path, but there are those difficulties. We need to acknowledge both. And I love, I don't, I'm going to look this up. I keep telling myself I'm going to look this up. And usually it's when I'm in an inconvenient place and it doesn't work. But whoever said, we are all just walking each other home. How beautiful is that? We are all just walking each other home. All right? So let's do that well. So my challenge for you today is to do that well. To walk yourself toward home lovingly. To walk others Walk with others. You don't have to drag them along. You don't have to carry them, but you can hold their hand. If you see that someone's struggling, you can walk with them for part of their journey. That, that would be the kind and loving thing to do. So that's our word for today, companionship. 
Those of you who are in the Appleton area, pop on in to 1821 West Wisconsin Avenue. Lauren's going to pop down hopefully today, and um, my sister Vicki's going to be there. So we'll see if we can have another amazing rummage sale day like we did yesterday. We had so much fun looking at all the stuff that was walking out the door with new new owners who were excited to get it, and we were very excited to have it go. <laughs> so all manner of things. Uh, we sold... A bunch of these collectible bears um, what else went Christmas stuff lots of Christmas stuff my mom loved Christmas stuff so lots of Christmas stuff blessed on its way to new people we just had a really good time it was fun so if you're in the area in Appleton Wisconsin today feel free to stop in and chat um, I'll be there part of the day I have to be home and take care of the dog and do some laundry and stuff too but have an awesome day we'll see you again tomorrow Remember you're capable of far more than you think you are. Bye all.